Today we have a crazy story of an entitled parent who keys a car over somebody parking in a handicapped space. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, is my homophobic mother manipulating me? For context, I'm a 21-year-old lesbian who's been with my 20-year-old girlfriend for 3 years now, but we've been friends since we were 11. When I was 16, I realized I was gay. I thought I was bi and wrote about my questioning in a diary I had at the time. My mom found this and confronted me about it. She never mentioned me being gay but mentioned other things on the same page, so I know she saw it and said how sick reading it made her feel. When I said she had invaded my privacy, she said it was my fault for not hiding it. A year or so later, she directly asked me if I thought any of her kids were gay. I said I was bi, or so I thought at the time, and she pretended she didn't mind. But it was obvious that once she realized it was more than a phase, she was not comfortable with it. She would regularly tell me she didn't understand why, if I have the option to date men, would I put myself through the hard and lonely life of being a lesbian. When I did realize I am a lesbian and not bi and told her this, she got even more angry and said I would never understand how much this hurt her and her struggle of trying not to tell me every day how much she hates it that she didn't believe I'm gay because it doesn't fit the story, and that if I ever adopted a child with a woman, she would refuse to see them as her grandchild. She's not religious, but keeps talking about how sad the whole thing is, and she doesn't understand why I would do this to her. She also tells me I'll never be taken seriously in my career, and that my siblings secretly think the same thing. She says she's not homophobic, but that she knows me and I'm not like this. She blames my friends, who are all LGBTQ, for making me think this life is normal or okay, which is where my girlfriend comes in. I have never tried to hide that my girlfriend is my girlfriend, but my mom has always hated her. She says she's weird and that she made me someone I'm not. When we have family events, she invites my siblings' partners, but actively refuses to let my girlfriend join. I've asked my siblings if they do think she's weird or anything, and they all say no, and my mother's been lying about it. Recently I snapped, because my girlfriend is currently in Canada and I haven't seen her in over a month and I miss her. I recently got a tattoo on my arm, nothing vulgar or anything, just a whale, a special interest of mine. I did expect my mom to freak out when she saw it, but she immediately blamed my girlfriend and started asking how I could let her convince me to do something so disgusting, aside of it being insulting that she thinks I'm that easily influenced. Or that my girlfriend would ever try to convince me to get one, I snapped because every choice I make that my mom disapproves of, she just can't accept it could be coming from me. It's more insulting that she even finds who I am so unthinkable that she has to blame someone. I did try to remain calm until she said, you can never wear a t-shirt around my family again. My family. That's when I lost it, because I'm so sick of hearing about how I shouldn't do what people, my friends say, but that I should constantly consider how my mom will look to her family because she raised me. She failed to understand how hurt I would be that she refers to our family as her family, or that I would want to be myself in front of my family, and they're just as much mine as hers. When I told her I was hurt and why, all she had to say is, well, they will think less of you. I just need outside perspectives here. My mom is a pro at pretending to like people, is even sometimes nice to my friends' faces, and will immediately say how weird they are as soon as they're gone. She tells me she's saying these things to protect me and that I'm hurting her by not listening. When I say I'm hurt by it, she laughs and she tells me everyone in my life secretly thinks this about me. No matter how we left things though, the next time I see her, she will act excited to see me and that everything is okay. Am I going insane here? Is my mom manipulating me? Honestly, I would ask OP two things, A, what they're trying to gain out of this relationship, and B, after all that you've experienced, kind of what you're even expecting out of this relationship at this point. I mean, she's been pretty consistently against you and even other members of your family don't seem to be judging you the way she is. I would say maybe a good question for OP isn't, is she manipulating you, but are you allowing her to manipulate you? Pinkiepipe420 commented, Sounds like you need to go low slash no contact with your mom. Confronting her sounds like you're screaming into the wind. I'm sorry, she's not more supportive of your journey. Some people don't deserve their children. I'm ace and have never really said it out loud. Because I'm an unmarried woman, I have older relatives on my dad's side who probably think I'm gay. Or I'm some kind of family burden because I'm unmarried and have no desire to. I don't talk to them anymore, but I was well into my 30s before I stopped keeping in touch. Not gonna lie, I miss my cousins and miss seeing their kids growing up, but the emotional toll just visiting takes on me is ridiculous. 
I just get strong flashbacks to how crappy their moms treated me. I don't think my sexuality specifically is why they don't like me, but I've always been the black sheep to them, so the fact that I don't necessarily identify as a full straight definitely doesn't help. I'm lucky my mom doesn't seem to care. My dad passed 11 years ago, but I don't think he would care either. But some of the things his sister and sister-in-law has said to me over the years sometimes still keeps me in a PTS loop of flashbacks. I'm still working on it. If I could have gotten away sooner or even realized that was an option, I would have written them out of my life decades sooner than I did. Edit, my dad's sister is the most condescending bench I've ever met, and she will give you the sweetest smile while calling you the fat one. Her backhanded compliments are still, to this day, the reason I don't know how to handle genuine compliments from people. I have higher hopes for someone like you, who's still young and has time to get the freak away from that toxicity. Go with the family you choose. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy crazy stories of entitled parents, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, Entitled Parents Complain After Being Forced to Follow the Rules. I work in security industry. I won't say where for fear someone will recognize this story. The main contract I work with is the local council. And one of the duties I perform is inspecting public halls after they've been rented for a function. Usually it's just private citizen having birthdays, anniversaries, wedding receptions, etc. Most of the time there are no problems, the worst being the space hasn't been properly cleaned. That's not a problem for me. I call the cleaning company the council has a contract with and they send someone out, hopefully before the place gets used again. The fee comes off the deposit paid for the hall. No skin off my nose. On a good day, these inspections take 10 to 15 minutes. A good day being when I arrive and everyone has already left, or is about to leave and can do any little jobs that it wouldn't be worth calling in the cleaning crew. Another thing that should be noted is the terms and conditions to which everyone has to agree before being allowed to use the halls state that they have a maximum of 60 minutes after their allotted time has finished to vacate. After that, they're considered to be trespassing and the police can be called to remove them. The worst thing about this is when the people hiring the space go over time. I get paid by the job, not by the hour. So a booking running long means I'm waiting for them to finish while not getting paid. And it's always the same excuse, oh, we lost track of time, sorry. Funnily enough, it always seems to be the people who are well off who run long. They seem to think that they can just throw money at the problem and it'll go away. Take this past weekend. The booking, an 18th birthday party, was scheduled to finish surprisingly early for a weekend night. I arrive the stipulated 10 minutes before the booking is supposed to be finished to find the cleaning has only just begun. To be clear, doing a good job requires at least 45 minutes. And these people had so much stuff it took them at least that long to get their personal stuff out of the building let alone making a start on the cleaning. Knowing all this, I go in and speak to the people who hired the hall, the parents of the birthday girl. I know from experience they wouldn't be able to get everything done in time, and politely suggested they focus on clearing out their own belongings so I could call the cleaners in. But I wouldn't be here if they listened, would I? No, they insist everything will be fine. They'll get everything cleaned and just pay whatever extra fee the council charged them for the extra time. However long it took them to clean, they would pay for the time, regardless of the fact that they were in breach of the contract they agreed to when they signed. No matter how I explained they would not be able to finish everything, they insisted on using the full hour they weren't really entitled to to get everything done. To clarify, they were supposed to have had everything packed, cleaned, and been out by the end of their booking, and the extra hour was going to cost them big. Needless to say, with 15 minutes to go, they have only just finished clearing out their gear, having stopped for 10 minutes or so to take some group photos in the process. I tell them they have run out of time, they need to get all their gear out so I can call them the cleaners, as there was still a lot to be done. At the time, they seemed accepting of everything, though the mother made a point of telling me she would be calling first thing Monday to talk to the bookings team. In retrospect, this was her threatening to go to my manager, though I'm not myself a council employee. They ended up clearing out just before the hour expired, and I was finally able to begin the inspection. Oh, and the real kicker was they scheduled the caters to pick up their gear 45 minutes after the scheduled end of the booking. I'd all but forgotten the issue until this morning, until I received a call from the council officer who is the liaison between the council and the company I work for. Turns out the mother was true to her word and had filed a complaint about the fact that I forced them to adhere to the conditions to which she agreed. 
Thankfully, the liaison knows me and my work, and once I explained the situation, he agreed I was simply following council protocol. I've no idea how my boss is going to react, as the company only recently took over the contract and they don't know me as well. If anything else comes of it, I will update. My apologies if this isn't as exciting as other stories here, but the sheer arrogance displayed by these people, their disregard for the fact that they've breached their agreement got a right up my nose to put it politely. Oh, and the kicker was that they believed they had the right to stay because the caterers they hired were late. Freak my life. Honestly, I think the model is conducive for issues, and obviously this is me just assuming, but OP presented it as they're booked until a certain time, and then they're contractually obligated to start cleaning 45 minutes before the end of the time. So I would say instead of booking to, let's say, 11 p.m., they should actually just say from the get-go, you're booked till 10.15, and that's it. And you have up to 45 minutes after that to get everything out. Like, literally next to no mention of 11 p.m., so they don't get that in their head. Wealthy people or just natural procrastinators who show up late to anything, they get that 11 p.m. figure stuck in their head and they're going, oh, well, I can do it in 15 minutes, no problem. I can get it done in 10 minutes. I can get it done in 5 minutes. Uh Uh-oh. ForklifteGirl404 commented, Having a partner that also works in the same industry, I hear all too many of these stories. Why do people think that just throwing some money around and saying they're going to put a complaint automatically makes them think they're in the right? Hope they get blacklisted from the place. Good job on keeping your cool. OP responded saying, I had a similar situation last year at a different location. The people hadn't even started packing up and wanted to go for longer and thought giving me money would help. No matter how much I explained I didn't have the authority or the right to take their money, they kept pushing it on me. They eventually left, but I think they ended up taking longer than the people in this story. Though they would have been out a lot sooner and charged less if they hadn't spent so much time arguing. Sadly, it wasn't until after this I learned of the 60-minute rule. This next story is, My father has kept my gender identity in the dark from all of my family for years. For context, I'm an 18-year-old trans girl, and I initially came out to my father back in 2019. Throughout all that time, however, he had never been supportive of me and, especially in the earlier years, he was very bigoted. He even used to hide it under the guise of, transphobic people will beat you out there and I can't risk that. I attempted to keep coming out to him on numerous times, since at times I found he just didn't understand at all what I was trying to explain to him. But as time grew, it went from complete ignorance to actual neglect. At some point when we had an argument recently, he rhetorically asked if, I'd feel good if he called me she, girl, or daughter, and I flat out said yes. He proceeded to follow that up by saying, well that's not gonna happen, and then he pretty much made it clear to me through an hour and a half argument that he would never accept or support me because I'm his kid. Despite this, I tried pouring out how alone and helpless I felt without having any sort of affirmation from him. He had never called me by my gender or even my proper name. All I really wanted was the latter, and I really hoped after that argument that something would have finally changed, but no. To this day, he calls me his son, dead names me, and misgenders when talking to anyone, especially my family, and I can never refute it because everyone will believe it, because they believe my dad. I felt stuck for so long, and it's only fueled my dysphoria and stressed me more as I just feel like I'm never going to get away from it. Unfortunately, a lot of my life feels like it's shadowed by him due to how he defines certain aspects of my life. Not necessarily controlling. He connected my bank account to his, my medical insurance to his own, which comes from his company, and most often or not makes baseless assumptions about me internally, which I found out the hard way. So, in a way, he controls the perception of how people view me, even with the knowledge of how much pain it's been bringing me. How much longer should I have to go through this? Well, considering that OP's now 18 years old, realistically, I think it starts probably pretty soon, but it starts with OP trying their best to unstick themselves from their father and trying to take control of their perception. At 18 years old, any of these documents, any of these accounts, OP should be able to access, and not just access, but control, change however you can. But obviously, I think that comes with caveats too, if you're relying on your dad for support and he doesn't support that, It'll unfortunately probably be a pretty tough road. A sick attack commented, You are 18. No matter what he wants, you now have the ability to access his information about you. You don't have to make all the changes all at once. Make them as you wish over time. I imagine it'll happen a bit like a bell curve, where you'll start out with small things spaced out until you hit the fulcrum and pick up speed. 
One day you'll hit the tipping point, then it won't feel quite so necessary to do things quickly, and last few pieces will be over time with less pressure behind them. But for now, do small things. Get all your stuff in order, get a job or get into college, start wearing accessories or items of clothing that show who you are, instead of who other people think you should be. Whatever makes you feel brave and pretty and you, however that end up looking. Talk to your doctor, you're old enough that none of that needs to get back to your father, and if it does, just find a new doctor. Even with his insurance, you have the choice of doctor to visit. Though, of course, it'll need to be within his insurance until you get your own. Small changes now, at your comfort rate, as everything should be. OP responded quoting, get a job or get into college, saying, that's the one I'm primarily working on now, start wearing accessories or items of clothing, I've already been doing that, even more so after he's been doing this, it helps sometimes but he still makes me feel small by calling it misgendering and dead naming even when I do. Small changes now, at your comfort rate as everything should be, well, I'd hope these small changes add weight to the bell curve down the line, but thank you for your advice. Our next story is, my dad thinks Democrats want to kill him. Warning, this is going to be political, obviously. I wanted to post this on r slash insane parents, but I don't have any images to go with it. So hopefully it's fine here. First, a little bit of background. My dad has been biased in favor of Republicans for as long as I can remember. Admitted he's voted only for Republicans since he started voting because he never trusted Democrats. I assume he was indoctrinated by Rush Limbaugh before I was born. He also indoctrinated me with Rush when I was a politically ignorant teenager in 2016. And before that, he would always angrily rant about Obama. Typical conservative stuff so far, right? But in recent years, he's gone off the deep end, believing more and more conspiracy theories like the Earth actually being flat and Michelle Obama secretly being a man. And while I've stopped supporting Trump, my dad has doubled and tripled down on his support of the con, wearing freaking MAGA hats in public almost every day. I should also mention a while ago, I made the mistake of telling my dad I thought Biden was the lesser evil in this election. My dad was flabbergasted going, you think he's the lesser evil? And treating me like an idiot because I disagree with him politically. And now we flash forward to a couple days ago. Me and my dad are in the car on the way to the grocery store and he decides to start yelling at me about politics. He starts going off about how Democrats want to kill every single Republican. No joke, he actually freaking believes this. When I tried to tell him he was likely believing fear-mongering propaganda, he interrupts me yelling, No, it's true! They want to kill us! They want to kill us! Since appealing to reason didn't work, I tried to tell my dad that there are radical elements of both sides, cause I assumed he thought some random online represents the entire Democratic Party for some reason. I told him that there's German World War II soldiers on the right, and he starts yelling, I know that's bullcrap, that's bullcrap, that's bullcrap, just refusing to listen to me at all. I told my dad he was acting like he was in a cult and he instantly yells, you're in a cult. Because not thinking everyone to the left of Ronald Reagan and Donald Trump is going to kill me makes me a cult member, I guess. Keep in mind he's yelling all this crap at me while wearing his MAGA hat, by the way. I tell my dad I don't want to talk to him about politics. And he laughs and grabs me on my shoulder roughly. We don't talk about it for the rest of the day and I hope you won't anymore, but it makes me uncomfortable while we're at the grocery store and he keeps treating me like I'm the dumbest freaker in the world because I don't think Donald Trump is the greatest president in recent history and America's savior. It's at the point where I'm afraid to vote for Biden because I'm scared of what my dad would do to me. I remember back when I voted in 2020, after my dad asked me who I voted for. I was still indoctrinated back then, so I voted Trump, one of the biggest regrets of my life. I told him this and he said something like, I already know because I watched you. I don't know the exact wording, but it was basically that. I confronted him about it years later and he says he didn't, but I still remember what he said before. He shouldn't be allowed to do that, but I feel like he will anyway in 2024. I'm worried what he'll do if Trump loses again. I'll probably be forced to vote third party in the general election because of my fear of him. Even though I'm an adult, I still live with him and it isn't worth incurring his wrath just to vote for the lesser of two evils, unfortunately. Sorry if this came off unorganized, I don't normally write stuff like this on Reddit, but this has kept bothering me since it happened and I wanted to talk about it since I couldn't find anyone else online who had to deal with this specific level of deranged politics from their dad. There's more I could talk about, but I don't want this to be too long. 
I just feel trapped here with my MAGA dad and it's giving me this sense of unease. And it hurts to know how far gone he is, cause up until now, I still had a little hope he could get out of this, but now it's obvious he won't. And leaving in the near future is unlikely. I'm a high school dropout who can't drive. I won't get into that though, cause it's personal, but just know there aren't many opportunities for me to leave, at least in the near future, so I don't really know what to do. I want this election to finally be over, but I'm also scared of what comes next. I just wish I could be living in boring safe times instead of now. I'd like to know what most people think about this, but legitimately in a situation, and I would say even if you're on either side, like if your parent is a huge Democrat that vilifies Trump and says Trump is out to end every Democrat's life, or vice versa, kind of like what OP's describing here, that it kind of becomes an A1 situation to just lie. If it makes it easier for you until you can get away from that situation, tell them you voted for whatever is going to make them not breathe down your neck. And if you're voting, vote in person because there should be no way that anybody is able to look over your shoulder or see who you're voting for. And if there is a situation where they were able to somehow see who you voted for in an actual official voting place, that indicates some serious issues with that polling place and that honestly needs to be reported. 3 times lucky 3 commented, election judge here, some suggestions, 1. I would hesitate to tell you to request a vote by mail or absentee ballot because I suspect your dad would vote it for you, so I would avoid that option, quite frankly, unless you are a thousand percent sure you could get that ballot out of the mail before him and get it back in the mail once it's voted without him knowing. 2. My state has early voting all over the place, but not in as many locations on the actual election day. See if you can get yourself to an early voting location ASAP once they open mid-October without dad knowing. 3. If early voting is not an option, can you get yourself to your polling place on election day itself without dad knowing? Our polling place is open to voters at 6am and most of our locations are within walking and biking distances of all the homes in that precinct. Suburbs here might not be an option if you're in a rural area or a red state with crappy access to voting. Can you set an alarm and go vote before dad's even up? 4. Finally, if you have to go with dad, here's exactly what I would do. Hang off to the side while dad checks in. Tell him you're going to wait a minute or that you have to go to the bathroom or get something from the car or whatever, just to get him to check in first and go into his voting booth, then pull aside one of the election judges or poll workers and tell them that you'd like to vote but that you cannot let dad anywhere near you until your ballot has made it completely into the ballot box. You can even do this while you're checking in. Important, choose one of the, um, younger or more spry workers. Not the youngest, but nobody elderly either. Scope out the most with it looking person there. They can help you. It's literally part of our job. We can distract dad, we can stop him hanging around the ballot box, we can make him wait for you outside, and we can do all that without it being your fault. You have the right to vote in peace for whoever you want, and as a worker, I would do whatever I could to make that happen for you, and I would try my best to do it in a way that makes me look like the bad guy, if you know what I mean, in case dad gets salty about any of it, because you have to go home with him and you have to live with him and I totally get that as a poll worker. Then vote for who you want, and tell them what you need to, and live a happy life. Our next story is, Entitled Mother Keys My Car Over a Handicap Space She Couldn't Park In. This happened roughly two weeks ago. Me, female 16, and my mother, female 36, were pulling into a car park for a home bargains. To my non-UK readers, this is a large-ish shop that sells basically everything for cheap. We drive a brand new convertible BMW. This is important. My mother pulls into a disabled parking space and we get ready to go into the shop. This is the last available disabled parking space in the car park. For some context, my mother has issues with her back and can't stand or walk for very long without serious pain, so we have a disabled badge to park close to the shop entrances. As I'm getting out of the car and walking around to the boot slash trunk to grab some bags, a woman, the entitled parent of this story, starts yelling at me saying that we can't park there. The conversation goes like this. The entitled mother says, excuse me, me turning around and making a confused face. She says, you just took my parking spot. We didn't. She was behind us when we pulled in. I said I wasn't driving. Sorry, I guess. She says, this spot is for disabled people and parents with children. You need to move now. I have children in the back. 
I reply, I have a disability badge in the car. We're allowed to be here. She replies, you don't look disabled in the slightest. These are only for disabled people. I reply, yes, my mom is. She cuts me off, shouting. People like you disgust me. You think you're entitled to park anywhere you want. You need to move your stupid freaking car before I call the police. At this point, she's out of the car and she's getting very close to me and shouting in my face. Up until now, my mother was waiting in the car for me to grab her a trolley to lean on while we shop. However, when she heard the shouting, she came out of the car. Mother shouting said, Hey, 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 that is a child. Why the freak are you getting in her face? My mother used to work in a bar. She can be very scary when she wants to be. The entitled mother replies, You can't park here. This is for disabled people and parents only, you entitled bench. I have two kids that are hungry. I need this spot. Mother replied, I have such and such medical condition, not disclosed for privacy. I am allowed to park here and it is none of your freaking business. And she goes to grab the badge and show it to this woman. Entitled mother still shouting while my mother is getting the badge. Women like you feel like they can do anything they want. You're so freaking vile. In this, I think she was referring to my mother's appearance and the brand new car. My mother is very pretty for context here and she probably assumed we were very well off, which we aren't. I've walked away at this point. A few more words were exchanged while my mother flashed her the badge that I didn't fully hear. She gives us a dirty look and calls my mother a tramp as she's driving off to park somewhere else and we go into the shop and carry on with our day. A boy around my age, the entitled mother's son apparently, comes up to me and my mother while we're shopping and is profusely apologizing for what happened. We tell him it's not his fault and just walk away. We're in the shop for about 40 minutes and we come out to see that the passenger side door of our car has three huge scratch marks in it. This tramp keyed our car because we parked where we were allowed to. We straight away connect the dots and my mother goes inside to speak to the security team while I phone the non-emergency police line to report it. Fast forward a few days and we get word from the police that they identified the woman who did it from security feed of her doing it and her license plate number on the feed of the argument between her and us too. The home bargains police cutout saves the day yet again. Seriously, how stupid was she to do it in broad daylight in front of a busy shop? According to the police's info, she denied everything and is persistent in saying we did it ourselves to frame her. We're currently awaiting a court date for vandalism and the insurance payout to get the car fixed. We have the security footage of her actually scratching the car up as evidence. So I think we'll be fine in both court and insurance terms. We'll update soon if anyone is interested. Also, just occurring to me after writing this, her son had to be at least 15. And parent and child bays in the UK are usually limited to children under 5, so she couldn't park there if she wanted to. I definitely don't know if it works that way like the lady was screaming about where parents with children can park in also handicapped spaces, but I'm gonna assume that there's a difference between handicapped spaces and what OP mentioned being parent and child bays. Let alone the fact that her kid was 15 years old, she probably couldn't park there anyways even if that was a pacifier sucking entitled baby loud co hd commented i lived in a high-rise apartment building and my truck wouldn't fit in the underground parkade it didn't have a lift kit but it was a 2500 heavy duty with slightly larger tires and it did have a headache rack that stuck above the cab a few inches the apartment had a very limited number of outdoor stalls at the rear of the building one of which i was assigned one Saturday afternoon, I was going out with some buds from work, and when I exited the building, there was a 53-foot trailer backed up to the building with four guys moving furniture in. The truck was kind of jackknifed in, and the trailer was less than a foot from my front bumper. My truck was also backed in with another vehicle behind it. I was trapped. I asked the first guy I saw if they could move the truck. He said I had to ask his boss, asked which one was that, and then waited for the described person. After waiting 15 minutes, asked a different guy where the boss was and was told he was upstairs supervising. Thanks. Went in search of the guy and asked him to move his truck so I could get out. Truth be told, he only needed to straighten out his backup job and I could have snuck by. But he flat out refused and frankly was quite rude about it. Told me, tough crap, freak off and wait. Went back downstairs to do just that and as I was sitting in my truck smoking and listening to tunes... I noticed there was a padlock hanging off the side door of the trailer, and there was simply a huge ring of keys stuck in it. 
I waited until there was none of the movers around, and I took the ring of keys, put them inside my jacket, and then went and threw them into some bushes some distance away. Then I went back up to my apartment and called my buddies to tell them I wouldn't be joining them. About four hours later, the building manager called me about the keys being missing. The movers were done and wanted to leave. I told them I didn't know what he was talking about. He asked me to meet him in the back lot, which I did. Boss mover was all up in my face, saying he knew I took his ring and there were over 75 keys on it and most were one of a kind. I just played dumb. Building management suggested we look at the surveillance video. I was a little scared. I didn't realize there were cameras back there, but I played it cool. We all went to the office and watched the footage, but the cockeyed way he parked the trailer blocked most of the camera's field of view. You could see me get out of my truck and walk towards the trailer, but couldn't see me actually touch the keys, and then walk back beside my truck, exiting the video near the back of the vehicle, but there was nothing in my hands. The footage proved nothing. Boss man called the cops, but they too watched the footage, asked me if I had the keys, which I didn't, so I said no, and said there was nothing further to be done. I asked if we were done and when I was going to be able to drive my truck. I was told to rent a car and submit my receipts, which I did. The truck moved the next day, but the trailer was left, perhaps out of spite, at the same angle blocking me in until Wednesday. When I was finally able to move my truck, I noticed the side was scratched up and the driver's mirror was hanging down. We went back to the videotape and clearly saw the boss man walking back and forth beside my truck before taking the mirror in both hands and breaking it off. It was my turn to call the cops. The moving company ended up paying my car rental tab $375 plus $5,500 worth of bodywork, paint, decals, and a new mirror. I hoped it also cost a bundle to replace all those keys. I lived there for two more years after that, and I would check on the key ring from time to time. They were still there the day I moved out. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.